Were the forms of the Egyptians on the walls of the tomb similar to the Africans? Are Egyptians really descended from Negro origins? What do the scenes and inscriptions of Egyptian tombs tell us? To know the answers to these questions, please follow me. I'm Naziz Suleiman, an Egyptian archaeologist, I'm going to tell you more about Afrocentric. Please stay with me. Around 2270 BC, King Pepi II, nicknamed Neferkara, ascended the throne of Egypt, and the star traveler Meko shone with him. Meko was the ruler of Elephantine and was interested in trade matters in the country of Kush and Oat for the benefit of King Pepi II, and on one of his commercial trips he was killed by the Kushites. The news reached his son Sipni, who was horrified by the news of his father's death and the seizure of his body by the Kushites. Sani went out to the south towards the country of Kush in search of his father's body until he found it and had to pay the price of money in order to take his father's body to his grave at the Kbat el Hawa. At the end of the 17th dynasty and the beginning of the 18th dynasty, the Egyptian conflict with the Hyksos drew the features of the end. During that period, the military commander, Amos ibn Ibana, left us his biography on the walls of his tomb in El Kab. Amos ibn Ibana did not complete the inscriptions of his tomb and his grandson Pahari completed them. The inscriptions of the tomb of Amos ibn Ibana tell us chapters of the Egyptians' battles against the Hyksos in what is known as the War of Liberation. The inscriptions of his tomb also tell us about the role of the Kushites in helping the Hyksos and the extent of their helping hand and sending spies to spy on the Egyptian army. In about 1450 BC, one of the greatest kings in the world ever ascended the throne of Egypt. Rather, he is indeed the greatest of them. He is Thotmos III. During that period, the star of the minister Rakhmi Ra, one of the most prominent figures in the New Kingdom, appeared. Rakhmi Ra occupied the viziership under Thutmose III and remained there in turn until the first part of the reign of Amenhotep II. His tomb in Shikab at al is historically important for its pictorial quality, especially in the texts it contains, which explain the various functions and responsibilities of the vizier as well as his duties. But the most important thing in this tomb is the scenes of paying taxes from Egyptian cities, as well as paying tribute from foreign countries. The scenes of the tomb did not gather Egyptian officials and foreign delegations on one wall, but rather separated them completely. The Egyptians were portrayed with smooth skin, beautiful hair, a pointed nose, and a small mouth. On either side of the entrance to the tomb, there are five superimposed registers, above one another displaying processions that are bringing to the vizier produce of the cities south and north of Thebes, regions called the head of Upper Egypt, which reach from Elephantine to Asut. These regions, north and south, comprise of 40 tax districts each, a total of 80. Each of the 80 district officials brings its contribution, livestock, agricultural and other products. The introductory text says, checking the accounts. The accounts of the vizier's office of the South City The accounts are opposite the mayors and district chiefs and local councillors, and heads of police prefectures and their scribes and cadastral scribes which are in the head of Upper Egypt from Elephantine and Fortress of Biga. These scenes explain to us the collection of taxes from Egyptian regions and cities. Thutmose III, a conquering king, greatly expanded the borders of Egypt. Egyptian painters reproduced these strangers on the walls of their chapels highlighting their characteristics, sometimes even to a caricature. The parade in the chapel of Rakhmi Ra commemorates an annual ceremony at which foreign nations' contributions are presented to Pharaoh in the presence of his vizier who will be responsible for recording and storing them. The Kushites and their neighboring cities were painted with thick lips, coarse hair, and a dark black color, unlike the Syrians, Canaanites, and other cities depicted on the same wall. There, tribute. Bearers are black, have frizzy hair and are wearing little skin loincloths. Six Kushites are wearing fly pendants suspended around their necks, very different in their general shape from Egyptian fly pendants of the same time period. Accompanying text, coming in peace by the great of southern countries, bending, touching the ground with their foreheads, bringing their tribute to the place where His Majesty is found. In order for him to give them the breath of life. Register 5, scenes of the Kushite and Syrian captives are depicted. These are both prisoners and hostages. In particular, Pharaoh required the sons of the high dignitaries of the conquered countries to be sent to his court, which calmed down tendencies to revolt. Moreover, these children received an education in Egypt and could be powerful supporters after returning to their own countries. Through the pictures, we notice the accuracy of the ancient Egyptian artist in depicting the scenes of the Kushites and the Syrians and the features of each of them.
and in a tomb of Amenhotep, surnamed Huinote T40 is in the Theban necropolis. This is one of very few tombs datable with certainty to the reign of Tutankhamun. The owner is called Amenhotep, but prefers to be called the most familiar diminutive of Hui. He undertakes the very important function of King's son of Kush, overseer of the southern countries. The tomb of Hui is one of our major sources for understanding the functions of a viceroy. The scenes showing presentation of the tribute to the sovereign are exceptional examples of such work and created the reputation of this monument. This theme occupies the three upper registers. The great ones of Nubia, who came in person, stand in front, worshipping Pharaoh and his representative. They come from three different regions, Upper Nubia, Kush, and a province south of Kush. These dignitaries are represented with marked negroid features, rings in their ears and two ostrich feathers held together by a headband. Their clothes, with a red sash and a feline skin on the back. It seems that the ancient Egyptian artist has left us the best answer that can be said to the Afrocentric, and this answer is summarized in saying, there is no place for you here. Dr. Nazi Suleiman was with you. Thank you for listening. And I wish you a happy day, I hope to meet in another video tomorrow.